Hey everyone, welcome to Calvary Church Online. My name is Pastor John Mark and I'm the online church pastor here at Calvary. Whatever platform you're joining us on or listening from, it is such an honor that you've joined us online. Here at Calvary, our vision is to help you connect with God and one another. Everything that we do revolves around these two things. Our chosen method for connecting with others is meetups. There are three different types of meetups. We have interest-based, current needs-based, and Bible study-based. All of our meetups are designed to help you find connection with others and give you an opportunity to grow in your faith. If you haven't joined a meetup in the past because none of them fit your schedule, interests, or needs, you are a prime candidate to facilitate a meetup. Uh, you get to pick a time, a topic, or activity, and if Calvary hasn't offered what you've been looking for in the past, now is the time to be the one to offer it for yourself or others. Our next semester of meetups are launching October 2nd. You can find all the information regarding options, times, registrations at calvaryptbo.church slash meetups or by reaching out to Pastor Kathleen at KathleenV at calvaryptbo.church. Officially last week, all of our midweek ministries have launched here at Calvary. So if you have a kid in grades one through five, Tuesday nights from 6.30 to eight, you are welcome to bring them on campus. And if you have a student from grade six to grade 12, we meet on Wednesday nights from 6.30 to eight o'clock as well. It is such a great time and we're so excited to be back this fall. If you call Calvary home, there are three ways that you can give your tithes and offerings. Uh, number one, you can head to calvaryptbo.church and go online, click the giving tab at the top of the page. Two, you can send an e-transfer to donations at calvaryptbo.church or three, you could drop it off at the main office during the week. If you have any questions about anything that we've mentioned here today, head over to our website calvaryptbo.church. It's your best resource to stay connected to everything that is happening each week. That's all for me now. And again, we want to thank you so much for joining us online. Our online service is about to begin and it all starts right now.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Calvary Church. My name is Pastor Bobby. I'm the Worship and Creative Arts Pastor here, and today I get to bring us our teaching. Over the last couple of weeks, we've really had some up and down uh, different type of services. Two weeks ago, our lead pastor, Pastor Paul, and the whole Malat family, we had a celebration service for them because it was their last Sunday with us. 19 years uh, that family spent serving and giving to the community here at Calvary, and so we were able to celebrate with them and launch them into their new season at Barry, And so that was a really kind of up and exciting um, Sunday. And then last week we had Glenda come and speak to us. Um, the week after um, our fearless leader had left and it was one of those moments, I think Glenda brought such an appropriate word for the time um, about just the time of transition, allowing us and giving us the, the space to be able to grieve and to feel the feelings that we were all feeling. And so maybe last week was a, was a bit more of a moment of, of less celebratory. Uh, and then this week, we're going to be launching into uh, our new series, the, the core of who we are, um, which we do every single September. And so we've had, again, a little bit of an up and down. If you're new with us, you are looking at us and a part of us as we are uh, the family of God here, going through those up and down moments, seeing how our eyes are pointed to Jesus, not just in the celebra celebration moments, but also in those moments where maybe there's a little bit more sadness or grief. And so I hope that you can see us well in both of those moments. But we're going to launch into our series every single September. We kick off that September with the core series, the core of who we are, community, outreach, and relationship, reminding everybody the mission and the vision and the values of Calvary Church to realign us, to ignite into us uh, just a, a reminder of who we are and what we're about, launching us into the new season ahead. Before we get into our values, though, we're going to talk about the mission and the vision of Calvary. Mission, vision, and values. They are uh, they are all here to help unite us, a group of people, anybody in that organization, to unite them around a single goal, a single vision. Because as a group of people moving together at the same time, you can have so much more impact than just doing something on your own. Have you ever been a part of a large group before? Maybe at an event or a concert or something where every single person is singing the same thing. Maybe, maybe at that concert the band stopped playing or the, or the musician stopped playing and the singer stopped singing and the whole crowd together is just singing in unison. It's very powerful. Maybe you, um, maybe you were uh, at a sports thing. This is for me. I remember being at a Blue Jays game, a playoff Blue Jays game in 2016. Um, and the atmosphere was just crazy. 50,000 people all there uh, for the exact same reason, right? To watch the Blue Jays win. And when you're watching a Blue Jays game or a baseball game in general, there's a thing that happens whenever the pitcher throws uh, two strikes and you're wanting that third strike to come, you always start that slow clap until it's faster and faster and faster. And the goal is that hopefully there will be another strike or an out and then everybody cheers together. And when you're at a playoff game, it's even more than that. And so for three and a half hours, the entire crowd is just standing on its feet. We are all cheering together. We have those two strike moments when we're slow clapping together. When the opposing pitcher was up, there was a chant that we were all chanting against the opposing pitcher. And there was just incredible unity. The it was a powerful moment, way more powerful than when I was just watching at home, probably not even doing the slow clap on two pitches, maybe not even jeering the, the opposing picture. There is so much more impact that you can have when you are united as a large group around a mission, a vision, around values. It's just incredible. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to remind everybody at Calvary who we are, what we're about, why we exist, so that we can align ourselves, so that we can unite over that, so that moving forward we can have so much more impact. So here we go. This is our mission. The mission of Calvary Church is this. We exist to empower disciple-making disciples of Jesus Christ. It's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. Calvary Church exists to empower disciple-making disciples of Jesus Christ. It's straight from Scripture. Don't worry. We're going to be reading a lot of Scriptures, some really important passages in the Bible because it actually is shaping who we are. The church exists to empower. That's the first part of that sentence. Church leaders, um, there's a verse in the Bible we're going to read in just a second. We, we have this thing, uh, leaders, teachers, apostles, uh, pastors, where uh, Scripture literally tells us what we're supposed to do. It's in Ephesians 4.12, and it says, As pastors, teachers, leaders, apostles, our responsibility is to equip God's people to do His work and build up the church, the body of Christ. Our job is to equip the people of the church to build it up. Not to do it all ourselves, 
although we are doing it with you, alongside of you, but our job is actually to equip you, to train you, to teach you, to align you so that you can know how to do it, to build up the church. But it's more than just equipping. We didn't use the word equip in our mission because also in Acts 1.9, um, it says this, but you will receive power when you, when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. When the Spirit fills us, we are empowered. And so the church is this beautiful picture between pastors and leaders teaching and training and equipping and the Holy Spirit filling and empowering you to be able to do the work of the ministry and build up the church. And so Calvary exists to create moments where you are with leaders and teachers and pastors, when you are together experiencing God and being filled with the Spirit to empower disciple-making disciples of Jesus Christ. That second one, disciple-making disciples. You become a full disciple, really, when you start discipling another person. We'll, we'll read this in Matthew, the Great Commission, which, which some of you have heard before, too. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority on heaven and on earth has been given to me. Verse 19, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. That whole mission statement is in there. Disciple making disciples. Jesus literally told the disciples, I want you to go and make disciples. But don't worry, I will be with you. I will empower you as you go. We wanted to make sure that in this phrase, it wasn't just disciples. We wanted to make sure that we implied and we reminded you that it is not just you alone. Sometimes we naturally would say, well, I can love Jesus, follow Jesus, learn more. I'll read my Bible. I'll pray. I can do all of those things, but you have to do it with other people. You have to be reaching out to other people. If you are actually following Jesus, you would know he is always sending us out. He is always telling us to go. He is always asking us to reach out and so we wanted to make sure in our mission it is to empower to be filled with the spirit as disciple making disciples our goal is always to replicate to duplicate ourselves to be reaching out and teaching others about who jesus is and then the last line to empower disciple making disciples of jesus christ it's maybe a simple thing just to add at the end it might be another thing that we think should be implied but again, naturally, sometimes we start following people. We are not disciple-making disciples of Pastor Paul, disciple-making disciples of, of Stephen Furtick or Beth Moore, or Andy Stanley, or a teacher that we listen to all the time. We are not following every single word that they say. We are disciple-making disciples of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we can just fall uh, into that temptation of maybe even being disciple-making disciples of the Bible. We are disciple-making disciples of Jesus Christ. All of these other things are good. They are helpful. They point us to Jesus. But we need to be reminded that in our journey, we are disciple-making disciples of Jesus Christ. And so that's our mission. That's the mission of Calvary Church. And after you have your mission, then you jump into your vision. The vision is your preferred future. The vision is if everything goes perfectly, this is what we could look like. This is what it could accomplish. And so we'll jump into uh, Ephesians 4.13. So let's actually jump to 4.12. This is what we had just read. As pastors, teachers, leaders, and apostles, our responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. But this is what could happen in verse 13. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son, Jesus, that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Wow, what a vision that we would all be mature, that there would be such unity in our faith. Hebrews 8, 10 to 11, here's another kind of picture of it. This is the covenant I will establish with the people of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I will put my laws on their minds and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they say to their neighbor, and this is just so cool, no longer will they say to their neighbor or to one another, you need to know the Lord because they will all know me from least to the greatest. Philippians 2, 9 to 11, therefore God elevated him, Jesus, 
to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at that name of Jesus, every single knee should bow in heaven and on earth and even under the earth. And every tongue would declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That is our vision, that every single knee would bow, that every single tongue would confess, that there would be incredible unity among all the believers, that we would talk to our neighbors about Jesus and they would already know what an incredible vision, what an incredible goal that we could look to, that preferred future of what our mission could help bring. I was uh, watching some videos and, and just uh, reminding myself of the importance and the clarity of mission and vision and values. And uh, there's a guy named Simon Sinek who had like a TED Talk YouTube video that I was watching about vision. And he was talking about how so many different organizations have vision, but they don't stand the test of time. And it's not good because vision is so incredibly important because the vision statement for that organization or the vision statement of our church should be something that the people who are under it are willing to sell out for. It needs to be something that they are willing to sacrifice, maybe time. They would be willing to say, hey, that vision, I will actually give a night of my week away from my family because I believe so deeply in that vision. I am willing to actually give some of my finances, the things that I work so hard for because I believe so deeply in that vision. I'm willing to actually give some of my talents away because I believe so deeply in that vision. It's so important, but some visions don't stand the test of time. And, and so he said, oh, if you have a vision statement, there's three questions. And let's see if you have a good enough vision statement that it will last through all three of these things. Vision statements, because they're so important, they need to be and the first one is resilient. Can that statement withstand cultural, political, or technological change? There are certain organizations that as soon as the internet happened, they could no longer exist anymore because they could not stand the test of time because their vision wasn't big enough. Can it stand the test of time? Christianity has made it through an incredible amount of things. Even just recently, let's just say even, even even in a smaller scale, can we make it through technological changes? You better believe it. Can you, can you make it through a pandemic while we're coming out on the other side, maybe even stronger? That's the crazy thing about the church is that when persecution even came their way, they would come out stronger. The vision of the church is resilient. The second thing is, is your vision statement inclusive? The very words that you choose in your vision statement, they are an invitation to those who may also want to contribute to what you're doing. And so if they look at your vision statement, does it include them? Can it include them? And that's why I love the vision of every single knee will bow. All people will come to a maturity. This is for everyone. And the third thing, if your vision statement wants to stand the test of time, will it last? It needs to be service oriented. It cannot be about yourself. It's not gonna last. There are some organizations where their main goal is about making money for the person who started the organization. It will not last. It will not stand the test of time. If you've ever done sales before, I was in sales for a season of time. Um, and if you want to have something that's going to last, you need to know that what you are selling is actually going to benefit the person that is buying it. That's a product that will stand the test of time. If you are selling that because you want to increase your profits, it's not going to stand the test of time. You can benefit from the vision. It cannot be the primary goal of that vision to be for yourself. It has to be service oriented. That the world would know. Sometimes we, we localize it. Pastor Paul in the past would localize it and he would also remind us that we're not alone. He would use a phrase called the 3%. So in Peterborough, he he would say, Peterborough and surrounding areas, this is how many people there are. But be reminded that we are not necessarily in this alone. There are other churches with the same vision, life-giving churches in Peterborough, and we are with them. So maybe we only have to think about the 3%. We want, our vision is for everyone, but be reminded that we are not alone. It is resilient. It is inclusive. It is about others. It benefits others. And so there we go. This is our mission, right? We exist to empower disciple-making disciples of Jesus Christ. And our vision is so that everybody would come to that full maturity and unity in Jesus Christ. And so now that you have your mission and now that you have your vision, now you can have your values, which is where our core series comes from. Community, outreach, relationship, the three things 
that we think are at the core of who we are, the core things that we value. The values statement defines what the organization believes and how people in the organization are expected to behave with each other, with customers, with suppliers, with stakeholders. It gives the people moral direction for the organization and it guides decision making. So whenever we are asking here at the church, should we spend our time and energy on this? Well, does it align with the community outreach and relationship, our core values? Because if it doesn't, we're not going to spend time doing it. How should we be behaving? How should people view us with people that are inside, with people that are outside, with people that uh, come in contact with us in general? They should just see community outreach and relationship flying through everything that we do. And so let's start with Jesus' words. This is where it, come from. it comes from again. Mark 12. 28 to 34, love God and love others. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, Jesus, which one is the most important? Of all of the values that you have in the Old Testament, which one is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is just like it, love your neighbor, as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and that there's no other but him. To love him with all your heart and your understanding and your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all of the burnt offerings and all of the sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you're not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, nobody dared to ask him even more questions. John 13, 34. When Jesus was with his disciples, this was one of the last times he was going to spend with them. Whenever you're with somebody for the last moments, you want to remind them, here's the most important thing. If you forget everything I was going to say, I want you to remember this. And he said this to them, love one another as I have loved you, because then everybody will know that you are my disciples on how you love one another. Our values are summed up in that, loving God and loving others like Jesus. So there's two categories, our relationship with God, And it says this, we will actively pursue a relationship with God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit in order to know and experience Him better. That is our our relationship with God. And then the others is relationship with others. This is where we have two categories. We will build community. That's our C. We will build community with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And we will serve those outside of the faith with intentional, and this is our O, outreach. And so in that relationship with God and relationship with other, we have our community. We have our core values, the core of who we are, community, outreach, and relationship. And so today, after that 17-minute intro, I'm just going to talk a little bit about community. Next week, we'll talk about outreach, and the week after, we'll talk about relationship. But let's talk about community a little bit today. And so I thought a good analogy for us would be the good old potluck dinner. Um, I was reading an article this week that used this as an analogy, and I thought it was just perfect. You picture a table um, with 20 maybe seats around it, a generous host who has opened up their home. They have set the table already, the plates are there, the forks are there, the cups are there, but they have asked every single guest to bring something for the meal, to contribute something. That's an important word, I think, in this sense of community, is that everyone is asked to contribute something to this potluck meal. Whatever is going to be served at this table is going to be a direct result of either, and these are two important things in community as well, either the generosity, the incredible generosity of the people that are coming or the stinginess of the people that are coming. If everybody is incredibly generous at this potluck dinner, it is going to be an incredible feast. If everybody is a little bit stingy, that whole feast is going to be stingy. It is all based on what people are going to bring. And so what would you bring to the table? Would you bring a home-cooked meal? Would you spend some time or energy? Maybe that's not what you're gifted in, and so you would spend a little bit of money or a lot of money on something good from the store, but you would think about it ahead of time. Or are you last minute just gonna grab something? Maybe you'll even show something. Maybe you'll even show up with nothing. I think another good question to ask with this analogy is what would you be hoping somebody else would bring? We've all been to potluck dinners, maybe family reunions, or maybe even at a church or a work gathering, and you are always excited about something else that someone else will bring. I remember growing up, 
um, with church potluck dinners. And there was always specific people that would bring things and you would be so excited. So for you, maybe even where you are right now, if you're watching this with somebody or if you're online chatting with a group of people, what is something when you show up to a potluck dinner that you are so excited to actually eat? For me, I remember it. There were these specific treats and um, they were like marshmallow squares with like chocolate caramel and they were made out of them. And I was always so excited for a specific lady to bring them every potluck. There was another lady that brought Nanaimo bars, my absolute favorite things. And so I would be excited to come because I knew they would be bringing something. They would be spending their time and I was excited to benefit from it. I remember everyone being excited about my mom. She would always bring like a specific like sweet and sour meatball dish. And I remember other people being excited to eat it and to come to the potluck because my mom was going to spend time, money, energy to actually bring something and be generous. When you go to this potluck dinner, do you eat beforehand? No. You come expecting to be fed. And if you're not fed, then you bring something more the next time. If you're bringing a friend to this potluck, you say, hey, don't worry about it. You're new. I want you to experience the incredible generosity of the people that I'm so excited to be in community with. And I just love that idea of somebody coming into our church community and we say, hey, you don't have to bring anything. You don't have to do anything. You will just be overwhelmed with our generosity because we're going to spend time thinking about um, our church giving our gifts, giving our time, giving our energy. You don't have to bring anything, but you will be overwhelmed with the generosity. Your first impression will be of how generous of a place this is. And you're excited when you bring that new person. You're excited because you are really hoping that, let's say, Aunt Jo is going to bring her meatballs because it actually makes the dinner better. Maybe you're excited that, that Uncle Taylor is going to be bringing his guitar and playing music because the atmosphere when he plays is just so much better. You're, you're excited that maybe Uncle Jesse is going to be there because this person has kids and Uncle Jesse always disappears and ends up playing with all the kids and the kids have a really good time. And you are hoping that others bring their best so that when you bring your friend to this community, they can experience the generosity. They can experience the giftings of everybody around there because that is what makes community incredible. Community is only built on the generosity of the people that are participating. And this is what we want the church to just be the best picture of. You receive and you give. And when you give generously and when you give your best, the community flourishes. And so we at Calvary, we, we want that to happen. We want this community to flourish. We want you, if you have musical giftings, to bring it to the church because we will be more excited to come because you are bringing your best. If you have a gift of teaching kids or hanging out with teenagers, we want you to bring your gift because it will make our whole community better. If you have the gift of being behind the scenes and making sure everything happens, we want you to bring your gift and your time and your energy because it makes everything better so that when I bring my friend into this community, I know that you are going to be bringing your best and they're going to be overwhelmed with our generosity. That's what can happen here at Calvary. We value community because if the community is health, he healthy, people are brought into this community and their eyes are pointed to Jesus. Their eyes are pointed to this beautiful God, Father, Son, and Spirit, this community of a God that we serve that is also one, this generous God that we serve because when they are in our community, they see a beautiful, generous, diverse community that is, again, like we were saying, mature in their faith and there is unity everywhere and it points their eyes to who God is. And so what's our next steps here? How can you become a part of this? Well, we have a couple of things, super practical. We have something called the crew. The crew is all of our serving teams. We have right now over 180 different people that serve regularly at Calvary Church. Maybe they serve uh, as, a, as an usher or someone who welcomes new people on a Sunday. Maybe they serve in kids ministry or youth ministry. Maybe they clean the church. Maybe they administrate. Maybe they uh, are on the worship team and they're using their, their musical giftings. We have over 180 different people that actually make this community the incredible community that it is. And so once a month we meet together. We help as pastors and leaders. Remember Ephesians 4, train and equip so that they can actually do the work and make this community incredible. We meet together so that they can be filled with the Spirit and empowered to be able to do more than they're even gifted in. 
And so if you're looking for a place to serve, would you join our crew? You can reach out to us, any of the staff members, or if you go to our, our calvaryptvo.church, you can sign up there and we will connect you with the giftings that are already placed in you so that you can give back to this community. I think the second thing that we can do is we can give. In general, we can give and we're going to give our best. We always talk about here giving our time, talent, treasure. Would you spend time and energy when you come to the church, give your best? Some of you are so talented. Would you give your talents to this community? Would you give and be willing to sell out to this vision? Would you give financially to what's happening here? Would you give your time? Would you be willing to believe in that vision? Every eye will see, every ear will hear, every tongue will confess in Peterborough who Jesus is and come to a full maturity in Jesus Christ, united together. If you sell out to that vision, would you give us your time? Because it will make this community an even better place, pointing people to who Jesus is. We have something called meetups. This is like our small group. So we have a pretty large church here at Calvary. And sometimes at large church, it's hard to have that small church type of feeling. And so a phrase that was always said around here is that you do not need to know everyone. You're not going to know everyone, but every single person needs to be known. And so we create meetups. Meetups are different thing, different small groups that have different semesters of time. So maybe 10 weeks long where you could play hockey, uh, where you could play sports together or do art or whatever. It could be around an interest. It could be a Bible-based study where you're going to meet people and go through a book of the Bible together. It could be a specific need, uh, divorce care, um, maybe grief share, where you and a group of people can get to know each other based on a, a specific need in your life. So we have these things. Would you join a meetup? If there's a meetup when you're looking at our meetups page that does not fit or your time or maybe what you're looking for, would you lead a meetup? Because again, we are only as good as what people bring and if they can bring it generously. One of the last things that we're doing that's maybe a little bit different than last year is this thing called Sunday Smorgs. So the last Sunday of every single month, we have our all crew together. But we also wanted to just invite everybody. Again, this is the thing with large church. We wanted to give an opportunity for people to connect, specifically out of um, the pandemic season, an opportunity for people to just eat together. And so the last Sunday of every single month, every single person is invited to stay and just eat together. After that, you can find a place to serve. There'll be some specific teaching and equipping that will happen. But every single person, whether you're here for the first time, whether you've been here forever, if you're involved or not involved, we want you to stay and eat. We want you to connect with somebody new. We want you to get to know people. We want you to become known. That's who we are. That is a picture of the community here at Calvary. That's a picture of who the core of who we are, community outreach and relationship. That's the vision that we are hoping for, uh, that every single eye and ear would be able to confess who Jesus is in beautiful maturity and unity. That is the mission, to empower disciple-making disciples of Jesus Christ. That is why Calvary exists. Would you become a part of it with us? Let's pray together. God, we come before you, hopefully reignited again over the vision of the church, hopefully being realigned again of who we are and why we exist, hopefully being a challenged a little bit about what we have been giving and how much more we could give or, or being reminded of, of how incredible it is to be about a, a part of a community that does give generously. So we are just so thankful for Calvary Church, for all that you have done in the lives of the people here and what you have in store for us in the future, would we be able to meet as a community so that when new people participate in our community, it is just so obvious that their eyes are pointed to you, Jesus. And so we love you and we thank you and we all sit together. Amen. Hey, we are so glad that each and every one of you joined us today. Again, if this was your first time joining us, we would love to introduce ourselves. We encourage you to fill out a connect card under the I'm new section of our website so that we can stay connected. Uh, that's all for me today. I hope you have a great week ahead and I look forward to seeing you again.